Okay, everyone. Um, today, I decided the topic should be on what everyone seems to call metabolic damage. And basically, 20 years ago or so, when I first got into the sport, um, people used to say, I can't get lean enough because I have an underactive thyroid. That's what everyone said. It was like, that was the thing to have. Underactive thyroid. I can't get in shape. Underactive thyroid. Um, today, people all say, I have metabolic damage. That's why. Um, if you hit a plateau and you can't get as, as ripped as you want, you can't get strided glutes, you can't get that crazy six pack that you want for your show, it doesn't mean you have metabolic damage. It just means you're like most people on earth and you have a difficult time lowering your, your set point and, and trying to get at, you know, really lean chiseled physique. It doesn't mean that there's something wrong with you. Okay, so just because you have metabolic, like just because you can't get as lean as you want doesn't mean you have some kind of uh, something wrong with your body. It's a, it's a challenge for everyone. Um, so I'm going to try to get rid of some of the myths on metabolic damage, say what you can do to fix it, and like really just try to prevent that kind of a, an issue. And it's mostly women. I don't hear many men saying they're having metabolic damage, but like women, I would say 50% of the girls I talk to believe they have uh, metabolic damage. Um, just so you know what really, like metabolic damage, what it really is, we're talking extreme, extreme fatigue, like you can't get up, like you're just, you want to lay down all day. We're talking depression, we're talking no sex drive, we're talking you don't have your period, um, insomnia, you're, you're talking like severe food allergies that just developed out of nowhere, uh, type 2 diabetes. So like people who are yo-yo dieting for years, they're eating sugar, junk food, and Dairy Queen and pizza all the time. And then they do a show and strict diet. And then, you know, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, yo-yo, 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 back and forth. The real issue with that is you're losing muscle. Muscle is what's basically giving you that high metabolism, okay? I weigh 213 pounds. It's mostly muscle. I can eat 4,000 calories a day and maintain whatever percent fat I have, say it's 10 or 11%, okay? If I was 150 pounds and ate 4,000 calories, I would not even come close to being able to eat what I can now. So if you want to have a leaner physique, you need to increase your basal metabolic rate. So to do that, we add muscle, muscle, weightlifting, you have to exercise and build up some muscle tissue. Every pound of muscle you gain, you're looking at 30 calories expended per day. So just think, if you add 10 pounds of muscle, that's 300 calories a day that you're burning without doing anything. That's not without, that's without cardio, without weightlifting. That's just sitting around and relaxing. So amplify that. Say you put on 20 pounds, it's 600 calories. So, you know, I've, I've got 60 pounds more muscle than when I used to do triathlon. So my metabolism is way higher. So I can eat a ton of food and, and stay lean. Now I don't eat a lot of junk because I don't want to get like disorders with like type two diabetes and I don't want to mess my body up. So I eat really healthy. But um, that's the main thing. You need to build muscle mass, okay? Um, there's several issues related to hormones like leptin, uh, ghrelin, cortisol. I'm not going to get into all that. It, like people don't need to know every little detail. They just want to know how to fix it. You know, if you want to do six, seven hours of research and figure out what every hormone does, then you know, be my guest. If you just want to, like a quick 10 minute fix on what to do, then that's what I'm, I'm here to give you. Okay. <clears throat> so other than adding muscle, Increase your protein intake. Protein is gonna, like you're basically your thermic effect of food here we're talking. If you eat a lot of protein, it's not the same as you eat a lot of fat. So if I eat a thousand calories of protein or a thousand calories of fat, my body does not have the same effect from those two things. Fat is fat. If you want to turn fat that you eat from like your coconut oil to body fat that you can pinch on your body, it doesn't take a lot of energy. We're talking like maybe a 3% expenditure. So out of a thousand calories, your body can store 970. 
Protein, 1,000 calories, about 670 of that can, can, can get converted to fat. The rest is burnt off through uh, metabolic processes, converting something from an amino acid to an actual adipocyte. Like you're thinking an amino acid, you have to change it to something else. That's a lot of work. Think of it as cutting down a tree and building a house. You have to cut it and do all this stuff to it. You're burning a lot of energy to um, convert that wood to whatever you're gonna carve out as like, your home or birdhouse or whatever, okay? So that's the first thing. Um, after uh, after you eat, making sure you got your, your uh, protein intake high, building up your muscle, the other thing is to eat low glycemic index foods, low GI foods, okay? So that means do not eat like your white breads and your sugars and your candies and your jelly bellies and all that stuff. You can't go do a show, finish a show, lay in bed and eat Skittles and Kit Kat bars and think that you have a bad metabolism that you're gaining weight, okay? You need uh, basically fiber, fibrous foods, low glycemic. So think of your fruits and vegetables. You eat apples and you eat cauliflower, you eat spinach, you eat, you know, healthy foods, peas, carrots, things that grow. Okay, so fruits, vegetables, that is a much higher thermic effect of food than eating a candy bar or eating a, a cheat meal that you're going to eat at the store and get your pretzels and whatever you're buying. Okay, so that's, that's going to make a huge difference. So I always, on my diet plans, include a lot of fiber and a lot of healthy food like your vegetables and fruits like berries, like blueberries, strawberries, blackberries. It's just anything that's healthy just think about it doesn't take a genius to know what's healthy you know that chips are bad you know like pizza is not going to be good for you it's easy to know like you look at the groceries you know your fruit and vegetables like really is any of that going to be bad and dairy don't think dairy is bad dairy is awesome greek yogurt is like the best thing ever it's got tons of protein and it's very low calorie and it's filling okay so stick to the like low glycemic foods lots of protein and also another thing omega-3 fatty acids okay that will also help your metabolism um, it's essential you need it okay so make sure you get your omega-3s you can get that from your, your supplementation or you can just eat your, your fish I love to have a salmon as, as a really good example for that okay so if you do have metabolic damage maybe 1% of us do 1% not 50% like most people think um, this is going to reduce your metabolism and I love to always compare things to um, basically thousands of years ago, okay? A thousand years ago, it, I wouldn't be dieting for a show. I would be trying to hunt a wolf to eat some food so that I can survive. So if, if you're, you're dieting for a show, basically you're, say you're going to a three month diet, you're eating 1200 calories a day and you're doing an hour of cardio a day, two hours, whatever you're doing. That's basically the same thing your body thinks is you are, it's winter time and you're starving to death and so your metabolism slows down to keep you alive. It does a bunch of things. Your body is smart. It's smarter than you think. It's evolved for millions of years to become what we are today and that's to survive, to live past the age of 12. We want to be 100 years old. So what it does, as soon as you go on a diet, guess what? Hunger goes up. You get hungrier. Makes you want to eat. It prevents you from starving to death. If there was no hunger signals, I don't know if those of you have kids, so kids won't even eat. They'll sit there and they won't eat their food. Like when you're an adult, you always want to eat. You're hungry, you eat. If we were never hungry, we could technically starve to death. We wouldn't even notice. We'd be like, oh, I'm not hungry. I don't need to eat. Okay? Hunger goes up. Um, you can't sleep as well. Basically, I tell people it's like your body's keeping you awake so that you can go and hunt and get some food and eat so that you don't die, okay? So, um, what's happening is your metabolism is like slowing down. Your blood pressure is going down. Your heart rate is going down. You're conserving energy. You're not as fiery. You might be sitting when you watch TV and you're like, like dead, not moving. You're not as you're not as metabolically active even though you're at rest like I have energy right now so I'm burning calories I'm talking but I'm talking with energy if I was on a severe calorie restricted diet I'd probably be monotone and not able to speak and, uh, and uh, no energy it sucks so 
you're conserving energy. That's to make you survive. So technically it's a good thing, but as a bodybuilder or a fitness model, we want to get to as low of a body fat as we want, so we want to overcome that, okay? Um, so there's nothing you can really do about it unless you add muscle, which is like the things I talked about, like you can eat your proteins and, and have your low glycemic index foods, try to prevent hunger, eat several meals a day instead of like three big meals, that kind of stuff. But you are going to slow your metabolism down. You have no choice. If I'm 213 pounds right now and I diet and I'm 200 pounds, 200 pounds of me is not going to burn as many calories as 213. So it's slowly lowering down, okay? So as you're losing weight, your metabolism is slowing down. In severe, absolute, horrible cases, we're talking like your 0.1% of people, their metabolism might slow down 500 to 800 calories maybe. Like, I'm not, it's not going to slow down to zero. You're, you're, you can't burn calories. If I lift this in the air, I'm burning calories. It's pure physics. You can't say, I didn't burn energy. Calories are like the amount of calorie, like a kilocalorie, say, how much energy is required to raise a liter of water one degree Celsius. So if you're actually moving, if I'm walking on the treadmill, doing steady state cardio for an hour, I'm burning calories. You can't just not burn calories. You can't have metabolic damage, go to the gym, do an hour of cardio, and not burn calories. So technically speaking, you can still get leaner even if you're damaged, okay? Your body's gonna fight from you wanting to do that by making you hungrier and tired and depressed and insomnia and the food, allergies and all these things. But you still can burn calories. You can still look somewhat reasonably healthy. Doesn't mean you can be 5% body fat for men in the off season and 12% for women and have veins going through your abs year round. This is not an, a realistic look or goal to achieve for 99% of the population. That's just not reasonable. So my opinion is people get into contest shape. You've dieted your best. This is the best you've ever looked. On top of that, you've cut your water, done your diuretics, and you're showing extreme muscle density and, and de definition that you can only maintain for a day or two, okay? If you have that as a goal in your mind that you wanna like somewhat look like that, you're setting your ups for failure. It's just impossible. So just because you were dieting from 130 to 110 and you're back to 120, it doesn't mean you have metabolic damage because you're not still at 110. It means you're normal. Your body wants you to survive. If your body fat's too low as a woman, no more period. That's a good sign that you're like extremely low in body fat levels, especially if you're doing um, cardio, you get the female athlete triad, you're doing your stress of the body and you're dieting and it's just all adds up to making it extremely difficult. Think of an adaptation. It's not a good time to get pregnant if you're not eating and doing two hours of cardio because what your body's thinking is it's a thousand years ago and it's winter time and you're struggling to survive, okay? so. That's an adaptation. It's, it's technically a good thing. The body doesn't want to get pregnant because it's not an abundance of food. It wouldn't be good if you got pregnant and you're six months pregnant and you have no food for your baby. Okay? Um, so, yeah. The main thing is we have to get realistic ideas of how can I look. Like right now, this is realistic for me. I don't suffer to look like this. If I wanted to be 5% and have strided glutes year-round, that would be really, really difficult and I would slowly lower my metabolism and the only way to get even close to that look is I would definitely have to eat lots of protein, um, my omega-3s, I would need to eat uh, low glycemic index foods, I would have to eat several times a day, I would have to train, I'd have to be everything on point, still be hard to get that lean, but not hard to be somewhere in the middle. I don't have to be 240 pounds and bulking up at Dairy Queen and McDonald's every Friday and Saturday night to put on muscle. I'm bulking. Oh my God, I need to eat all this junk food. To, my biceps are going to get bigger if I eat a chicken nugget because it's going right here. No, not going to happen. Um, so after a show, if your coach tells you take time off to the gym, oh yeah, you don't want to make a... Don't go to the gym and start eating normal because you need to refeed and, and you need a binge so that you can reset your metabolism. It's going to rock it. It's going to like, yeah, it's going to amp it up. So instead of eating 1,200 calories, you eat 3,800 calories. Well, guess what? That's 2,600 calories that you just overate. Your metabolism might go up a bit, burns 50 extra calories. You're still 2,000 plus calories over. 
That is a recipe for getting obese in a month after a show. If you do a show and you're doing an hour and a half of cardio and eating 1200 calories, you stop the show and you stop training hard and eating more, you're going to get fat. There's no choice. That's, that's what's supposed to happen. Your body's thinking, okay, he just killed a deer. Let's eat all this deer in two days and then we'll have enough food to survive till the next day he can hunt some food. Okay? So, you can't go from like ripped um, to being fat without doing something that you shouldn't have done. You can't just say it's my coach's fault. A lot of people, my last coach here all the time, my last coach had me eating 800 calories and doing two hours of cardio a day and then I gained 50 pounds after. I'm like, well, you shouldn't have gone that low because really I don't recommend anyone go below 1,200 calories. That's like, the, that's the bottom line. If you can't get ripped on 1,200, you're not born to be ripped. Just don't do it. Cardio, there's, you can do over an hour of cardio. It's not like somebody said, oh, if you're doing more than an hour of steady cardio, you're going to get metabolic damage. No, no. I used to do triathlons. I used to do five hours of steady state cardio and my body fat was low because I was burning calories. You can't, I mean, look at the Tour de France. Those guys ride on their bikes for six hours a day. None of them have over five or 6% body fat. And guess what? They're eating 7,000 calories a day. They're not starving themselves. They're on their bikes eating the entire race. I used to do bike racing, swimming, running, triathlon, so I've done it all. I've competed in bodybuilding in 52 competitions, so I have base, like experience. I know it from experience, not just from clients and watching other people, but personal experience. You can do two hours of steady state cardio a day and not get metabolic damage. As long as you don't lose your muscles. If the muscles are big, they're still going to burn calories. Now, if you lost lose 20 pounds, yeah, your metabolism's slower. If you're 275 off season, and you're looking really chubby, and then you diet down to 198, your metabolism, of course, is gonna go slower. Your body's not carrying around 275 pounds of lard all day long. So your metabolism's gonna be slower. You should have been 220 in the off season, and then it'd be much easier. So don't bulk up, don't get fat in the off season, and then have to diet, because that's yo-yo diet. Up and down, up and down, you do that, that can cause serious problems long term. We're talking like diabetes, type 2 diabetes, not just like metabolism issues or I don't look good. You know, on top of the mental stress of seeing yourself go from you're the best looking girl or guy in the gym and now you're the least attractive, you're the biggest, you're the most off season looking person in the gym, that stress has to be enormous. So, on top of that, it's also stressful on the body to actually eat that much junk food to gain that. So don't tell me you have metabolic damage and you're eating 1500 calories a day in the off season and you're doing three hours of cardio. If you're doing three hours of cardio a day and you're eating 1500 calories, you're losing fat. Even if you have metabolic damage, you're still doing that work. Now, if you're on a stepper and you're holding yourself the whole time like this and you're walking or you're in a treadmill and you're hanging on and leaning back and walking at three miles, you're not burning the same amount of calories as it says. So don't go by what it says. You burn a thousand calories, maybe you only burn 400, but you did burn calories. If you put out a watt, you're putting out a watt. It's a calorie. It's going to come from somewhere. It's not magic. You can't breathe in calories that you're burning. It has to be food that's ingested in your mouth. So if you gain 20 pounds of fat, you ate. 20 times 3,500 calories per pound. So like, I don't even know, it's like 7,000 or something, 70,000 calories. You did that to yourself. You ate that food. You should have been eating your fibers and your vegetables and your salads and your protein and not your McDonald's and your bacon and your eggs and your toast and your pancakes and your sausages for breakfast, followed by pizza and alcohol and chicken burgers and hamburgers and fries and pop and chips and then the bulk barn jelly berries and sour puss fudge pack whatever they want to call this stuff no you're doing it you're doing it to yourself don't lie and say you're not eating too much you are eating too much if you're gaining way too much weight you're eating too much now it's normal to gain some weight i'm not saying everyone should be contest shapey around but if you're more than like 15% over your contest weight, you're too big. If you can't maintain 15% above your contest weight, you should rethink why you're in the sport. The sport is not for everyone. It's hard. 
Not everyone needs to do it. If I can only run five miles a day, I'm not going to start training for a marathon if I don't like running. If you don't like being healthy and eating good and stuff, don't say I'm gonna compete in bikini contests where I have to starve myself all the time when you hate it. Try to be like normal and don't compete and don't be fat, be healthy. Live a healthy lifestyle, be right in the middle, okay? So if you can't, if I'm, if I'm, if I'm competing at 200 pounds and I can't be around 230, I'm too big. If I can't maintain 230, if I'm at 230 and I'm starving, I'm, oh, I hate life, I wanna eat so much, I, I miss McDonald's. Just stop competing and be 230 all the time and just don't go on the yo-yo roller coaster. You need to be able to be either pretty healthy all the time in an extremely healthy first diet or just be moderately healthy all the time. You can't be extremely healthy and horribly unhealthy. You're setting yourself up for type 2 diabetes. You're going to hate your life. You're going to hate competing. You're only going to be competing for all the wrong reasons. So like say, you should like to compete. I compete. You don't do 52 shows and not like it. I do it because I like it. Okay? I enjoy the challenge. I enjoy the diet. I enjoy everything about it. If I hated dieting and had no energy and was an asshole to everyone when I'm on a diet, maybe I shouldn't diet and maybe I shouldn't compete. As I said, competing is not for everyone. Okay? Just because your friend at the gym does it doesn't mean you need to. You could probably be healthier than them and look the same way you're out. Say you're 130 all the time and your friend is 140. She diets down to 110 and looks smoking hot and then she wins the bikini show, then she's 150 pounds, she's actually gained more fat than she started with, and then who's better off? The one who won the show and is now 150 from 110 and feels like, like crap about how they look? Or you who've been 130 and consistently, you know, you train, you don't go crazy, you eat out every now and then, who's doing better, you know? Who's a better person? I'm a IFB pro bodybuilder. Am I better if I win the Mr. Olympia? Say I'm 210 and I beat Flex Lewis somehow. Win the Olympia, then I'm 300 pounds in the off season. I can't bend over to tie my shoes because I'm out of breath. I'm gonna get a heart attack and high blood pressure. Versus the guy who gets, say like me, like 11th place in my show, but I'm healthy all the time in terms of my blood pressure and my cholesterol and my, you know, my, I'm just all around a healthier person. Now I'm not saying Flex isn't healthy, I'm just saying as an example, like, I think it's a lot better to not win the show and live and be healthy than to win the show and then look like crap the rest of the year. Because I know you all know some of the bodybuilders that look awesome show day and then a month later they look like they've never set foot in the gym and it's like what is going on, okay? Um, I made some notes just wonder if I'm missing anything. Oh, in the off season, okay? You did your show and you're and you're and you put on your 30 pounds, you're like, you're watching the video and you're like, Oh, that Greg guy's right. I shouldn't have gained all this fat. I'm, I'm an idiot. Do not use Clen. Do not use T3. Do not use Fragment to lose weight to get back to where you were in the off season. You can't just rely on drugs to even get you to being normal. If you're at 35% body fat, you don't need drugs to get down to 25%. Now, Clen and T3 and these things, it might help you get from a low body fat to an extremely low body fat, but you don't use that just to become normal. You're just regular healthy lifestyle, healthy eating and exercise can get you from being obese to being average, like normal. Now, if you have to use these other drugs later on, you know, that's a decision you have to make, but you're not gonna just do it at the start of the diet, okay? You have a certain set point. You're born a certain way. Your body wants a certain body fat percentage, okay? That's your genetics. It's not all genetics. Being good at bodybuilding, 50% genetics, 50% environment. So, if I have really awesome genetics and I train really awesome and I eat all and I do all the right stuff, then I'm gonna be a great bodybuilder. If I have average genetics and I train my ass off and work everything on par, I'm gonna still be a pretty awesome bodybuilder. If I have absolutely horrible genetics and I train my ass and I do all those good things, I'm only gonna be average, okay? But if you have the best genetics in the world and you train like crap and eat like crap, guess what? You suck. If you have average genetics and you train like, you suck still. If you have shitty genetics and you shitty training, then you clearly suck. So, yeah, genetics is important, but guess what? What you do with those genetics is going to give you to what your result's going to be. Okay? I wouldn't say I had amazing genetics. I started, I was 142 pounds. How many of you are 142 pounds? Probably every single person that's a guy watching this video had more muscle than me when I started. 
And I started competing in grade 12, but I had been weightlifting since I was 10. So that's, you know, already seven, eight years solid, hard training. I've been training for 28 years, okay? I didn't get a pro card until 26 years of training. So think about that. When you say, oh, I'm 21 years old, I'm 25 years old, I need a pro card. I've been training in the gym my whole life. I've been at it for three years. Three years? I didn't even enter a show for eight years, okay? So take your time with the sport, enjoy it, but be healthy, okay? Very important. Um, am I missing any other points? Uh, no. All right, so maybe one more point. Yeah. People who hire me for a diet, guess what? You're going to do steady state cardio on my diet unless you don't need it. Not everyone needs it. You are not going to do HIIT cardio. That's the only point I'm missing. HIIT cardio, we do HIIT training in the gym with weights. When you go and do your set of squats, it's hard, your heart rate goes up, then you rest, then you do another set of squats, then you rest, another set of squats, and you rest. That is HIIT training, okay? We don't need to do it. We don't need to sprint and tear our hamstring muscles sprinting. We don't need to push our body to the limit. We're already eating less calories. If you have enough energy to do these interval, hard intensity, sled dragging, crazy workouts and train, I don't know how you're doing it because you have more energy than I do. There's no way two weeks from a show I could go out and do wind sprints for 30 seconds followed by two minute recovery jogging and sprint back and do all that stuff. You gotta save your energy for the gym when hit the weights to get the muscles big. You want muscle. Maintaining muscle mass is the most important thing, dieting. You don't need to lose all this muscle mass. Hit training is great, but guess what? We do it with weights. Steady state cardio is great for burning fat, okay? I don't know why so many people have a big thing against it. And yeah, sure, the, the research shows hit training, burn more fat long term. Yeah, you have oxygen debt and then you have to repair. You burn more fat for 12 hours after than during. Yeah, we know all that. But it's hard as hell. And if you do hit training and then do squats, one of the two is not going to be all out. There's no way I'm sprinting and recovering and sprinting and recovering and then going to do squats later that day and expecting to improve as much on both. Save the hit for the gym with the weights. Cardio, steady state, easy cardio, like, you know, two and a half, three miles an hour walking, 15% incline. You're burning fat. The longer you do it, higher percentage of fat you're doing at the start, you know, you're burning more carbs, less fat as you're going more, the percent of fat is getting higher and less carbs. That's burning off the carbs that you ate, it's burning off the fat that you have. It's still gonna burn more fat later, but not as much as hit cardio, but it's still easier and more effective long-term for more people, it's more realistic, okay? Save hit cardio for people who do sports, like when I was a swimmer with swim team, swim two laps and rest and swim two laps and sprint and run and sprint up a bike, bike right up a hill and slow down and sprint up a hill. That was so that I could sprint at the end of a race to beat someone else or have some gas left to out, you know, sprint someone in a triathlon or something. It's not to burn more body fat. I didn't think of body fat at all at that point. Okay. So I'll end it there. If you need a trainer, look me up. Greg Doucette at hotmail.com. I have an athlete page um, on Facebook. You can hit me up there, like my page, or just add me to Facebook, ask some questions. I'm, right now I'm training 30 people. I still can train more, not many more. It is a lot of work at this point, but uh, there's always people coming and going after a show. Usually a few people stop training with me and then I can take on a few more. So hopefully you learned something. If you don't agree with me, you know, tell me why. If you agree, tell me you agree. Tell me your experiences and Hopefully this sheds some light on metabolic damage and don't think you have it. Don't use it as an excuse. You can do it. You can be healthy and look good. Just don't think you have to have veiny six pack year round because that is just too extreme. Okay, good luck.